rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory. Great things He has done. Great things He has taught us. Great things He has done. And great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But pure and higher and greater will be our wonder, our worship when Jesus we see. to say a, a, a particularly uh, a new welcome to you as you take up this new role uh, as vicar here at Church of the Saviour. It's great to be together tonight. We've gathered to give thanks to God for this, but above all we've come to worship God and to know again the refreshing presence of the Spirit of God in our midst for all that God calls us to be and do as his people. So uh, welcome everyone as we gather in the name of Christ. Dear friends, we have gathered here to celebrate an important moment in the life of the parish of Blockhouse Bay. We have come together to welcome Shashi and to institute him as vicar. Bishop Ross and people of the parish of Blockhouse Bay, we bring Shashi to you. We thank God for Shashi's 20 years of ordained ministry in both in local parishes as well as around the world for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray that this parish will love and support Shashi in this new ministry. If I could have um, anyone from the missions community please stand with me uh, as I share. Johannes, Chris. <laughs> Bishop Ross and the people of the parish of Blockhouse Bay, we bring Shashi to you. We thank God for Shashi's, uh, I'm sorry, we have also come to support Shashi who has served in missions to provide and promote care of mission workers as well as have been catalyst to promote the gospel work among the Hethnes around the world. We pray that this parish will welcome, cherish, and flourish with Shashi in the gospel work, both locally and globally. And we as a Church of the Savior would like to welcome Shashi 
Uh, this we do by inviting Donna to um, come forward and um, put on a red stole for Shashi. Uh, this is a new stole that has been specially made uh, to, uh, and is a gift, uh, our gift to Shashi from the church to celebrate this very special day. I'd like to give a couple of practical announcements. Uh, in case of an emergency, I um, hope we don't have one, but if there is one, the emergency exit door is just in the corner up there as well as the main door out. If you're able to go up to the, the, the front of the, the top of the street in the apex area, please don't um, stand in the car parks because that's where the, the emergency services would come to, but it's at the front or at the, the apex of the street up there. Um, if you're requiring a toilet, um, you just go through the foyer and they're on the left. The woman's is through the first door, the men's is through the second door. There will be refreshments at the end of the service and we invite you to join us for tea and coffee and supper. And if you do have a cell phone with you tonight and you haven't yet turned it off, it would be greatly appreciated if you could do that now. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. I hope you making practical announcements doesn't mean anything I say is going to be impractical. <laughs> <laughs> we welcome especially uh, Shashi's wife, Ruth, and their daughter, Shipra. The extended family who are both present here in uh, the congregation tonight, but we are also being live streamed. So greetings uh, to those who are watching us from India, from the USA, from Canada, from Australia. Uh, Facebook and YouTube are our friends tonight, enabling that to happen. As well, uh, welcome to clergy uh, colleagues who have joined uh, with Shashi tonight to show their support, lay leaders from around the diocese, representatives of the various missions who have spoken already, uh, the congregations and Christian leaders of Blockhouse Bay Area Churches. Who's here from some of the other uh, churches in the area? Welcome. Thank you, friends. Very, very grateful for your presence and your support tonight. So, welcome to you all, all of you who have come to support and pray for this new beginning in ministry, and together reflect on the nature of our own Christian calling as brothers and sisters in Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator, whose love was at our beginning, is without end, and is in our midst, and with us. God is here. Here we find new life. Let us give thanks for the coming of God's reign of justice and love. Jesus Christ is the release of the Lord, release for the captives, recovery of sight for the blind, and liberty for those who are oppressed. Uh, well, continuing to respect the different ways in which one and, uh, people are greeting one another, uh, let's greet one another.
friends just as we regather. Uh, the, the longer you do this, the more likely the sausage rolls are to get burnt. <laughs> Friends, amongst my uh, welcomes earlier, I skipped over a paragraph. I do want to acknowledge the Reverend Fraser McDermott, who's just making his way up the aisle there at the moment. Uh, members of the Standing Committee of the Christian Community, of which the Church of the Saviour is a part. So welcome, Fraser and friends from the Christian community. Jesus 
and Psalm 107, it declares, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the, from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands, from the east and the west, from the north and the south. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Well, God's love does endure from everlasting to everlasting. And we give thanks and praise to our wonderful Lord. If you'd like to be seated, please. A number one Christian uh, worship song that's going around the world at the moment is The Blessing. I don't know whether you've heard that song. It's a new song that has been released um, throughout the world during the COVID pandemic uh, lockdown period. And it's based on God's blessings from three um, Old Testament passages. And Shashi has chosen this, a lovely version of the song to share with us tonight. It's in 31 Indian languages. 31! <laughs> and this is in recognition of uh, Shashi's heritage and culture. So let's listen to this version of the song. Mm-hmm. 
So in English, I will say, the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and give you his peace. May you know the Lord's grace and favour and prosperity in your life. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious and eternal God, through your Son you have called us into the fellowship of your church. Hear our prayers for all your faithful people, that in the ministry which you have given us, we may be instruments of your love. And we pray that you would give to your servant Shashi the gifts of grace, the guidance of your Holy Spirit, and the strength he needs for his call and his ministry for the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, Jan Clearwater is going to come and read God's word to us from 1 Peter chapter 5, and then we're all going to stand for the gospel reading from John chapter 20 um, by Brian Taylor, and then Bishop Ross will come and share God's word with us. But before they come, let's pray for the ministry of the word. Oh, well, loving God, we thank you for the Bible and how you speak to us through it. As the scriptures are read to us, and preach this evening. May you touch our hearts and minds and draw us closer to you. We pray for Bishop Ross as he, as he shares your word with us. May you anoint him and empower him and fill him afresh with your Holy Spirit as he serves you and as he ministers to us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One Peter chapter five verses one to four. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's suffering, who will also share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be. Not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Thank you for standing for the gospel reading. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood amongst them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us. Thanks be to God. 
Now may the words I speak and the thoughts of us all reveal to us your grace and your loving purposes, our Lord and our God. Amen. I'd like to begin by acknowledging, Shashi, the work that you have done here at Church of the Saviour during this year that you've been priest in charge, uh, the way in which uh, that ministry has led us all to believe with you that God is calling you uh, to remain here, uh, to become the vicar and to lead this parish in its mission and ministry in this community and beyond. So as I said before, it's a kind of a funny thing to be gathering to uh, welcome here somebody that you already know well, but it's a great night and I'm glad we're together. I want to recognise too that as a parish community, you've been on uh, a challenging journey the past year or so, as people have made decisions about their continuing place as part of the Church of the Saviour within the Anglican Church. And to acknowledge that some of your friends have chosen to move to worship elsewhere in response to this church's decisions the Anglican Church's decisions around human sexuality. So thank you for the careful way in which parish leadership face those issues. Uh, you face the challenges and work through the implications of them. Thank you for those of you who have chosen to stay and maintain your commitment to the life of this parish family and to the mission to which you believe you are called here as the people of God. Tonight we set our eyes very much on the future. And we commission you, Shashi, along with uh, Ruth and Shipra, your ministry together amongst us, uh, this more permanent way in which you now offer leadership here as the vicar. I very much believe that building strong local churches, communities of Christian faith, where the gospel is lived and proclaimed and heard, uh, communities that reach out to others to form authentic and caring relationships with them, that offer the opportunity to belong and thus to discover what it means to believe, that this is the best way by which we carry out the work which God has entrusted to us, continuing to make known the good news of Jesus. So let me emphasise then that I'm not loading all of that on Shashi tonight as he comes here as vicar. That, that is about the life of your parish community as a whole. Shashi brings particular gifts among you. and He assumes a role, a significant leadership role in the parish. But he takes it up alongside many others uh, and amongst you as the people of God who are given that task together, all of you to bring your gifts to that task. God calls you to ministry uh, together here at Church of the Saviour because together will be the best way in which the good news of Jesus continue, uh, can continue to be proclaimed. The church needs to ensure that it understands the context into which it is called to that ministry. This context in which we now seek to make known the good news of Jesus. And that's true in every age and through every generation. And in each generation, we're called not to shrink from the challenge of uh, the changes that we uh, encounter in society and our response to them so that we can be good and effective witnesses to Jesus. We mustn't be afraid of that challenge to, to change where we need to uh, and to continue to faithfully proclaim Christ. That's actually not as easy as the words make it, make it sound. You know, all the context is changing. We just need to be alert to that and change uh, in ways that uh, allow our witness uh, to be effective. Working that out requires real wisdom, real discernment. What kind of world, what kind of Aotearoa New Zealand society will we encounter, say, in 10 and 20 years from now? How do we prepare for that constancy of change that will lie ahead? How will the church need to be shaped in order to carry out this gospel mission with effect and with integrity? We can't be altogether sure about what that means, actually, standing here, sitting here tonight, except that we know that it will be about facing contexts that are uh, as yet unknown to us. I hear a lot of talk in education today about 
you know, facing that question of how do we prepare young people for a future that we don't understand? In some ways, that's the same for the church. How do we continue to prepare ourselves for a mission in a context which is changing, which we don't altogether understand? How do we find new ways of uncovering the presence of God, who is as yet unknown to so many, and for whom our familiar ideas and our language as the church can mean little or nothing? When I left school, I worked for the Bank of New Zealand for a few years. Uh, when I think about it, frighteningly, that was most of 40 years ago now. I was trying to remember the last time I told this story, and, and I seem to remember I talked about it being 30-something years ago. Well, now it's most of 40 years ago. Um, anyway, they were uh, days when you were at workplaces, you were still allowed to sit in your workplace and smoke. And so uh, I worked in this branch, this open, big open branch, you know, a big space like this, everybody at their desks and the tellers just up there. And, uh, and people sitting at the desk, you, all day just puffed away. In fact, when I first went to work, I came home, I stank of cigarette smoke all the time. My mother was convinced I started smoking. She was very worried. That was the kind of environment that it, that it was. Well, anyway, once a year, and we had this air conditioning engineer that would come uh, in order to check that the air conditioning was working properly. We had those big old, do you remember from old office, those big old kind of you know, slabs of things that hung from, from the ceiling. And he wanted to know that the air was circulating effectively right through the whole building. It was very technical business. He'd go around, first of all, and tell all of the smokers that they had to put their cigarettes out. Okay. That's the first thing. Uh, and then what he would do is he'd go and he'd stand underneath this big air conditioning unit and he'd light his own cigarette. <laughs> and he'd go... <sighs> blow a hollow smoke up. And then he'd, he'd wander around, looking up where the smoke was going. <laughs> and then he'd move on to the next air conditioning unit and do the same thing to be sure that, yeah, it seems to be going uh, everywhere. <laughs> I told you it was very technical. Uh, I've often thought about that because it's become a metaphor for me. We are people of the Spirit. And that little story from my working past is a metaphor for me about our task as the church of seeking to, discer to, to, to discern where the winds of the Spirit are carrying us. Where are they blowing? And how do we follow them? How do we identify, discern, follow the winds of the Spirit as they blow in this world and lead us. We read from John's Gospel tonight, one of the first of the resurrection appearances of Jesus to the disciples. And that sense of being people of the Spirit is there immediately as Jesus breathes the life of the Spirit into those disciples, commissioning them for their Gospel task, the task of of carrying the good news of the forgiveness of God through Jesus Christ to the world. And so when we then read through the New Testament, through the Gospel and into the Acts of the Apostles, we see how those disciples grew more and more into being people of the Spirit, how their boldness increased as they opened themselves to the winds of the Spirit's work, and how those winds carried them uh, beyond Jerusalem and Judea to the ends of the earth, just as Jesus had foretold as they uh, carried the gospel to many, many other people. And we see how they responded to all sorts of challenges as they faced the questions of, well, how are the Gentiles to be incorporated into Christian faith? And as they adapted the gospel message to uh, the different cultural and religious contexts of their day. You know, Paul's famous sermon to the Areopagus. He uh, was able to insert himself into uh, that culture and some understandings of God in order to make known the good news of Jesus. All of uh, those challenges making the kind of connections in different societies and cultures that allowed their ministry and their proclamation as Christian disciples to be effective. For at its heart, our faith is a missionary faith. 
It's not, not one to be imposed on others, to be used in any way as a, a tool for religious manipulation. But it is a thing of value, this good news that we have in our hearts, that hopefully we want to share with others because we know just how valuable it is uh, and how much it has affected and changed our lives. It's good news to tell. We want to share with others and to know that our God is a God of mission, a sending God. The Father sends the Son to the world. The Father and the Son together send the Spirit. And the triune God together sends the church, empowered by that Spirit. It is God's mission, not ours, but God entrusts us with such an important part in it, participating with God in it, just as those first disciples were called to be agents and proclaimers of this saving grace, revealed to us in Jesus Christ, crucified and risen. So I think we too need to be looking for those uh, connecting points, just like Paul at the Areopagus, you know, being able to see a place I can connect here to reveal to them this unknown God. How do we reveal the God who is unknown to so many? Where are those connecting points for us today? Not in a way that, well, we'll just find whatever it is people maybe want to hear and you know, promise them that. Not to offer them whatever they think they might need, because the gospel actually is about challenge and change. It's about the announcement of God's kingdom breaking into the world with its call to repent and believe. How, though, are we as part of God's mission, allowing the vitality of Christ's life to be incarnated in us, incarnated in our life as a church, in a way that makes sense to people, and that makes a difference in people's lives, that is vibrant, that is dynamic, that allows God's mission to be fulfilled in the power of the Spirit? And it's not an easy question to answer. I think, in some ways, the church is still getting over the death of what we sometimes call Christendom. It really happened decades ago. In other words, the time when everybody knew about the church, had some kind of sense of what we stood for, what we believed, weren't maybe too scared to walk in the door of a church because they'd probably been there at some stage. The church was a, a kind of a familiar idea and a familiar place to people in our society. There were connecting points. If we just kind of talked about, oh, at my church, this goes on, and maybe that would attract you to come. People knew something about who we were. But those old connecting points are fast disappearing, if not actually already gone for most people. And we need to identify the things that are important and that make sense to people now that can become the windows through which they might come to know the unknown God, the God who we have come to know in Jesus Christ, so that he may be seen and known by others. So when it comes to our clergy, you know, we can't just assume that, well, you know, let's train and form clergy to simply say this and do that and assume that it will all be well for the church's future. I think a different kind of leadership is needed to help the church to find its way into this unfamiliar future. If we are to take seriously our call to participate in the work of God's mission. So I thank God with you tonight that you welcome as your vicar a priest with enormous experience in cross-cultural mission, one who is able to lead you in new ways of facing those contextual challenges, one who brings the experience of making known the gospel in different places and different ways. Our team at work, what we call our Episcopal uh, team, Archdeacon Michael and I and others who work together, um, we talk about these issues a lot. Our focus on trying to strengthen local congregations for this work. And one of the things we sometimes have talked about is the concept of adaptive leadership, which in essence are similar to ideas of biological evolution. It's about helping organisations to create an agility 
That means that in a changing environment, we survive and thrive rather than getting left behind because we learn to adapt to change. Remaining true to our core beliefs and our values, being clear about our vision, we can determine the things that along the way, though, we can shed in order to make room for new thinking and new strategies that can help us be more open to the winds of the Spirit blowing amongst us, leading us in different places and different ways, bringing about change so that we are more effective witnesses for Christ. You know, for me, it's not so much about trying to find the latest whizzy program that we might implement, because that seemed to be working over there. Rather, it's about fostering a culture within our community uh, as the church, where the diverse collective knowledge and skills of us all It's good body theology from Paul there. We all bring gifts that need to be added together to allow the body to function. Bringing those together, harnessing them, and using them for the good of the whole. It's about taking risks and making mistakes, finding new ways of being and speaking, and working out just where those winds of God's spirit are blowing and carrying us. And one of the interesting things that people who write about adaptive leadership have identified is that actually change isn't radical, it's incremental. And in fact, it's only a small percentage that often needs to change. (laughs) But the discerning wisdom part of it is recognising, working out just what it is that we need to change in order to adapt to the new context in which our mission is to be fulfilled. It is a work of discernment. It is about listening for the voice of the Spirit, identifying the winds of the Spirit as the Spirit offers his wise guidance to us. So we need leaders who understand our our history and our ethos and our values and our vision. We need leaders who are able to understand the societal context in which we're called to work, the needs and the worldviews and the aspirations of people and communities who are way beyond the life that we share within the church. We need leaders who can foster a culture of inclusion and participation, not be afraid to let others try things, not to be afraid of change. We need leaders who will persevere through the mistakes, pick themselves and others up again with them, trusting God's call, trusting God's purposes. But you know, above all, we need leaders who know and love God, to hold within themselves the same divine compassion that was in Jesus. People who love and care deeply about others and who desire to see God's good harvest come through their labours. So Shashi and the people of the Church of the Saviour strive hard to be uh, true to the message of the gospel and to be effective in the mission context of our time. Keep your eyes to the future as you adapt to the shifts in culture and context and keep it fresh. Shashi, lead this church in your task of uncovering the presence of God in this community and the communities beyond and the world beyond. And together, above all, make known the good news of Jesus. Thank you, Bishop Ross, for your words of encouragement and challenge. Our uh, Chinese congregation's choir is now going to come and offer a song. Joint.
very much to the nomination committee. Um, and I'm sure the parish would like to express your thanks then for their Shashi, do you believe that you are called by God and the church to the ministry to which you are to be licensed? And are you, the people of the parish of Podcast Bay, happy to receive and accept Shashi as your new vicar? We are! Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All of you, that wider group of supporters, this means it's going to get even louder. All of you who have come here tonight to witness this new beginning, will you do all in your power to support and uphold Shashi in this ministry? We will! I might not be as loud on my own, but I've got a microphone. <laughs> Bishop Ross, I confirm that Shashi has signed the declarations of acknowledgement of the authority of the General Synod to Hinota Whanui and of the Synod of this diocese paying canonical obedience to the bishop of this diocese and upholding the liturgical life of this church. Shashi, you have been duly nominated to this office by those representing both the parish and the wider diocesan community. Do you now, in the presence of God and this congregation, commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility? With God's help, I do. Shashi, the people of the parish of Blockhouse Bay seek to be sustained in Christ and to be equipped for the ministry of all God's people in the world. Will you be a leader and a partner, a guide and a pilgrim within this priesthood of all the baptized? With God's help, I will. Then be a true minister of God's word and sacraments and a faithful pastor of God's people. Continue to grow into the fullness of the stature of Christ. Now let us all pray as we offer ourselves anew in Christ's service. Ever-living God, you call sisters and brothers in Christ to unfold your creative and renewing word among us. Grant to your servant Shashi the grace which he needs, and renew us all as we seek to follow and serve you in the spirit of Jesus Christ. Living God, renew us all as we seek to follow in the spirit of Christ. Amen. Amen. May, May we, we together, together be found, found in Christ, Christ and, and Christ, Christ in us. us. Shashi received this license to the office of Vicar of the Parish of Blockhouse Bay, Church of the Saviour. Accept this ministry which we share in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Shashi, welcome to the Diocese of Auckland and to the Waitemata Archdeaconry within the Southern Region. I commission you to serve now as Vicar of Blockhouse Bay. The joys and responsibilities of this office are now yours. Let's greet your new member. Thank you. Thank you. We are here 
because Shashi loves and follows Jesus. And we are here because we love and follow Jesus. And you tonight are in a church that's named after Jesus Christ, Church of the Saviour. So because Jesus is the centre, let's stand and worship him of the song, Jesus Be the Centre. time for us to present symbols of ministry to your new vicar to be used in the ministry to which Shashi has been called. Would you please be seated? speak to us and ponder its meanings for our lives. Amen. 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 Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Mary.
I pray that we will endure to follow Christ's example to serve one another in humility and love. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I pray that in our prayers we will give thanks to God's goodness to pray for others as well as ourselves and to offer our lives anew in Christ's service. Amen. Amen. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. I pray that we who share Christ's body may live his risen life. We who drink his cup may bring life to others. And that we whom the spirit lights may give light to the world. Amen. Thanks be to God. I pray that God will have mercy on us and set us free so we will know that we are forgiven, that God will strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. I pray that in the ministry to which we have been called, we may serve the Lord in holiness and truth and be wise and faithful stewards of all that God has entrusted to us. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. I pray, come Holy Spirit, and empower us to be the followers of Jesus Christ, to proclaim the good news, to preach, baptize, and nurture new believers, to respond to human need by loving service, to transform unjust structures of society, to challenge violence of every kind, and pursue peace and reconciliation, and to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation, and sustain and renew the life of the earth. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Shashi, on behalf of the parish community, we welcome you as our vicar and look forward to ministering with you Receive these keys and may they open the church doors to all. <laughs> oh God, make the door of this house <laughs> wide enough. <laughs> when Louis is laughing, he 
there is a big laugh. Oh God, make the door of this house wide enough to receive all who need divine touch, human love and fellowship, narrow enough to shut out all envy, pride and strife. Make its threshold smooth enough to be no stumbling block to children, nor to strain fit, not but rugged and strong enough to turn back the tempter's power. God, make the door of this house the gateway to your eternal kingdom. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Shashi, let all these things be symbols of the ministry which you will share with the body of Christ in this parish. And please make sure you've read the minute book by tomorrow morning. <laughs> Accept our hands in friendship and as signs of our love and support, we commit ourselves to working with you to empower all in the shared ministry of Jesus Christ. And that commitment is also mine. May God renew our soul in the life we share, giving you courage, wisdom, strength and love to work together. Particularly on you, Shashi, the blessing of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Amen. Let's give uh, a good go at this final, well it's not quite the final song, but I think this encapsulates much as I, of what I was trying to say. Let's celebrate that God gives us a future and commit ourselves as be people, as being people who are dared to go with God. Please stand. Stefano et Karaiti Cura. Absorbane Prabhu Isuranam Masalam. 
आप सभी को प्रभु यीशु मसीह के नाम में बहुत सारी शुभकामनाएं आई वॉज सेंग समथिंग इज दिस दैट ग्रीटिंग्स टू यू ऑल इन द नेम ऑफ जीजस सर डोंट बी स्केट आई वॉज नॉट सेंग एनीथिंग एल्स Praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. So great to be here and in this way. Today we gather here to mark a historical day in our lives. Every day is a historical day in each person's life because God so graciously grants us gift of life and breath each day is very important but we are here in this place is not by accident or a chance but by god's grace revealed to us in jesus christ if it was not for jesus you and i would not be fellowshipping in this manner today Jesus's life, death, resurrection and blessed hope of his return brings new life for us to be here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All glory to God because of Jesus. So why am I standing here in this role after all this? It's because since 2014 I discerned that God was calling me to a new assignment. to explore this assignment i attempted three times to go back to the region of this world which i live is a south asia my homeland of india i attempted within sim three times a senior positions of leadership to go back to south asia but each time i took a step forward i was prevented Does it sound a familiar language if you read the Bible? This struggle continued for five long years, and I was pre- prevented almost three to four times. Every time I reached to the point, and then it would have a reason for not to pursue further. So during May and June, as normally any Christian would do in 2019, I was reading the Bible. and i was studying through the scriptures and especially the book of acts when i was taking a staff devotion at sim where i used to work before coming here during the first week of july 2019 that is about one year back when i was taking staff devotion based on acts chapter 16 verses 6 to 10 do you know what that passage is Come on those of you who read bible you should know <laughs> it is a macedonian call about paul's vision of a macedonian man of macedonia for paul and tim to go westward and not eastward i was desiring to go back to the my eastern land but god was calling me to westward not knowing that god was calling me to the central west of auckland to serve here in blockhouse bay Here we are together now to explore what God has planned for our future together in his kingdom. And that has been the confirmation for me for this past 11 months. I stand here in midst of you because I passionately desire to follow Jesus. And I would like to be in a company of people who desire the same. I am convinced of the authority of the scripture so I would like to share ministry with those who hold that conviction Therefore I stand here to express my gratitude to God for his gift of salvation in the name of Jesus for infilling presence of the Holy Spirit and leading and guiding since 1987 in ministries both in India in New Zealand and all around the world except south america and antarctica i've been to all other continents i didn't go to antarctica because i don't know how to speak penguinish 
Well, today in this context, I would like to express my thanks to Bishop Ross Bay, Bishop of Auckland, for his trust and confidence that I can serve in this parish. Thank you for your trust. Thank you to Archdeacon Michael Berry and Nomination Committee for discerning with me to trust that the Holy Spirit, trusting the Holy Spirit that I would be suitable candidate for this role in this position here. As I take this new venture to serve as vicar of this parish, I cannot bear the burden without the support, care, and love of my dear wife. My wife Ruth and daughter Shipra. I'm thankful to both, of, both Ruth and Shipra for discerning with me that this was a place and role to be in this season of God's calling for us to be here. Thank you both for being there for me in all through this past 24 years of life together in mission and church. Thank you to my Fano, my family, which sitting here in this audience, my extended families, my family members, who are live streaming or watching across this unknown links, live streams in India, in Canada, in USA, in Australia, and so many friends all across the world in the various mission communities, such as SIM and other mission, mission communities where I have served, all the church leaders and friends, colleagues, across the globe, as well as present here in this audience. Thank you. Thank you for journeying with me. Journeying with me to be in this place at this time. Also, I want to express thanks to the people who have continued to stand with me with prayer, with commitment, and with love and compassion. And I've been here in this place for past 11 months. You, you love this, isn't it? Because I count the days. So. <laughs> Special thanks to the parish of Blockhouse Bay. Here at the Church of the Sevilla. Who have endured the hardship, heartbreaks, but with the strong faith you are the people of prayer, faith, and confidence for what God has for our lives together for his gospel and glory in this part of the world. I'm grateful to God for each person belonging to this church. I'm thankful to tireless and hard work of staff members like Claire and the wardens and the vestry members and each person voluntarily carrying the task to make life happen for us together to be in this place. Each person is so significant and so important in this parish. I want to express to God for faithful, enduring church members in this parish who've been here for 90 years of plus their lives. It shows the fervent commitment to the scripture, to Jesus, and to this place to call home and to be a community together. As we will begin a new season of a preaching from next Sunday, and we call it as a 5G, we're moving very fast. <laughs> Before anyone else, we have the 5G. And that is what we enjoy in this place. We enjoy to glorify God. We enjoy to grow the disciples of Jesus Christ. We enjoy to gather together to worship the Lord. We enjoy to go out to make disciples in all various ways. And we generously give ourselves in the service, opening our lives as well as our resources for the mission and for the work of God. So if you want to know more, you are welcome to come and join us from next Sunday.
So here I am, I'm already recruiting people. <laughs> I admire resilient commitment of the people of the Church of the Savior for your commitment to Jesus Christ, the gospel work, and conviction to the biblical orthodoxy, and relying on the Holy Spirit to lead in every battle we face. Thank you. Thank you for your fervent passion to the life of prayer. That's one thing in my ministry life I found this parish is so committed into the life of prayer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. So as we look forward to God's way and a future amongst us, you know this song we learned here in this parish, we have never sung this song, we sang in February and then we went into lockdown. So it's good that you picked up today after lockdown. And we have sung this second time. And that is the message we have. God has a future for us. He's daring us to go. So let's trust him. Let the trust, the wind of the spirit to lead us and to guide us in the future he has. As we look forward to the future, God's way among us, I would like to request you to pray for us. Pray for us to remain resilient and devoted to Jesus Christ, to the biblical orthodoxy, guidance of the Holy Spirit for gospel work, and meeting the needs of the community both locally and globally. So may I invite you, my friends, in this time as I share with you, to let us pray and let us seek the Holy Spirit empowerment for our lives together. As I'm entrusted with the leadership, I plead to you to pray for my family and me, for the spiritual protection, guidance of the Holy Spirit, resilient devotion to Jesus Christ, and to the Word of God. Pray for God's wisdom. You have heard so many of my stories for the last 11 months, how I have come, who I was, and I cannot even stand coming from the background where I come from. But because I stand here, because of God's grace. So I seek your prayers, prayers for God's wisdom to lead God's people in the way God wants me to lead. Would you join with me to pray for my family and for me? Tena koto, tena koto, tena koto katawa. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this privilege for us to be together in your house as your people, as we embark on a journey which you have for us. As we sang, Lord, we pray that as you have a future for us and you're daring us to go, Lord, I pray that we may trust, trust for the Lord, your leading and guiding, your conviction and your truth at heart to live out a resilient life in our ever-changing world, as Bishop shared with us this, after, this evening. Lord, give us your grace to respond to, to the challenging and changing tides of this world. Father, I pray for the people in our community of Blockhouse Bay, in our community of Auckland City, in our nation of Aotearoa, and in our world, as we suffer from all various challenges and demands of life. Would you come amongst us as a healer, reconciler, and Lord sustainer? Come amongst us and, Lord, reveal your gift of salvation and freedom and liberty. Lord, we pray that empower us by your Holy Spirit to be your living agents of grace, mercy, and gospel into this world. 
Empower us in the name of Jesus to serve you faithfully so that, Lord, those who, Lord, come across our way may find love, compassion, truth, and joy. Father, I pray for each of our diocese in New Zealand, each of our leadership, each of our, Lord, uh, clergy, as we lead, the Lord, your people, that we will be strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray for, Lord, our societies which are hurting due to this COVID crisis as the economy is hard hit and our people who have lost their jobs are economically struggling. We pray, oh God, that you may help us to be the agents of compassion and meeting some of the needs of our community. Lord, we seek you. We seek you for your, your guidance. Come your way. Strengthen us. Empower us. Lead us and equip us unto your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to finish the service, um, we're just going to um, pray for Shashi, Ruth, and Shipra, and, um, and for the parish for the new beginning of ministry. So uh, Shashi, Ruth, and Shipra, if you'd like to come up to the front. Um, and as is the tradition here at Church of the Saviour, um, we invite um, anyone and everybody who would like to come and pray for Shashi and Ruth and Shipra to come forward to gather around them, maybe lay hands on them, um, and lead us in prayer for them. We'll have a, a microphone here so that we're able to all hear the prayers of the, um, you know, those who want to lead us in prayer. So um, come. Gracious God, your love has called us together. Your grace has enabled us to know you. And this night, Lord, we stand with our brother and our two sisters, thanking you for calling them to this task. Pour your blessing upon them, that they, knowing your grace, may lead in the way that your grace requires. And be, Lord, pleasant, present as we have prayed throughout the service with the whole congregation that they lead, that together they may be a force for good of the kingdom of God in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father God, we want to thank you for the story of this family, for the history for the experiences, for the compassion that they bring of who they are. And Father, we pray that you've called Shashi and the family because that's what you want to bring to this community, to this church, who they are and who you've developed them to be. And we just pray that you may give them boldness to speak your words, but compassion to walk alongside people in this journey that they may be a voice for this church, for you, in this community. Many years ago, when I was grieving over the state of the church in this country, the Lord told me, back in the 1990s, that he would bring people from the east, the north, and the west to this land to bring New Zealand back to him. I've known from the first time I met Shashi that he was one of them. That's why you've not been allowed to go back home, Shashi. <laughs> and uh, we have watched him be faithful in many other callings. And I give thanks that today, Shashi, 
the Lord's given you a place to set your feet, a Tūrangi Waiwai, from which to minister and to be widely known. And may God fulfil all his purposes in bringing you to this country to serve amongst us, for Jesus' sake. Father God, we thank you for Shashi and his family. We pray that you will continue to fill him, and as we serve beside him, this place will flourish. Father God, we pray you will strengthen him and help us walk beside him. Thank you for our new leader, our new shepherd. We pray that you will bless him and his family. I'll pray in Chinese. 恩典的主啊我们来到你的神座前我们要特别的为相信牧师和他们整个的家庭来祷告你这个时候特别的求你从天降下你的圣灵厚厚的高抹他也高抹他的整个的家庭主啊正让他在你里面蛮有能力你降
Would you like to stand, please? It's very cool to hear that you're a 5G parish. <laughs> it's okay being dial-up as well. That's disciples in a loving and understanding parish. <laughs> Let me offer you God's blessing. The spirit of truth leads you into all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the word and works of God. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this night and all your nights. Amen. Amen. Friends, go now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen. We go in the name. special service for Shashi. Um, we now have um, supper if you would like to stay and join us for morning tea and refreshments. I mean, oh, supper. Yes, yeah, stay for the morning. Yeah. It's supper. Yeah. <laughs>